Welcome to episode 61 of Gods and Heroes of Ancient Greece. My name is Mylinda Butterworth, and today we begin with the tales of Troy and the story of the building of Troy. Long, long ago, two brothers, Jason and Tardinus, sons of Zeus and an ocean nymph, ruled over Samothrace, an island of the Aegean Sea. Jason, well aware that he was descended from immortals, ventured to raise his eyes to a daughter of Olympus. Overcome with impetuous passion, he wooed the goddess Demeter, whereupon his father punished him for his boldness by striking him dead with a thunderbolt. Dardanus grieved so sorely for the death of his brother that he left his realm and his country and journeyed to the mainland of Asia, to the coast of Mysia, where the rivers Simwa and Scamander meet before they flow into the sea, and the lofty mountain range of Ida tapers off towards the shore and merges with the plain. The king of this region was Toser, whose ancestors came from Crete, and the people of his country, a people of shepherds, were called Tukri after him. The king received Dardanus hospitably, gave him a daughter to wife, and a strip of land of his own. This he called Dardania, and the two crew who settled there were called Dardanians. His son, Aethanos, succeeded to the throne and begot Tros. After him, the country was called the Troid, and its capital, Troy. Both Tokri and Dardanians were now known as the Trojans. Aeolus, the eldest son of King Tros succeeded his father. Once when he was visiting the neighboring country of Phrygia, the king of that country asked him to take part in a contest which had recently been initiated there. Ilos won in wrestling, and his prize consisted of fifty youths and fifty maidens, as well as a brindled cow which the king gave him, repeating an ancient oracle to the effect that wherever the cow lay down, he was to build a citadel. Ilos followed the cow, and since she lay down near the site which had been the capital of the country and ever since the days of his father Tros, and was called Troy, he set about building on this hill the solid citadel of Ilios, or Illum, which also went by the name of Pergamum. And from this time on, the entire region was called Troy, or Ilium, or Pergamum. But before beginning the work, he begged Zeus, his divine forebear, to give him a sign if the plans were pleasing to him. On the very next day, he found an image of Pallas Athene called Polydum, which had fallen from heaven and was lying in front of his house. It was three cubits in height. The feet were placed close together, and in her right hand the goddess held a spear, in her left a distaff and a spindle. Now the story of this image is as follows. Legend had it that from the day of her birth the goddess was brought up by Triton, a sea god, who had a daughter, Pallas, of the same age as Athene. The two girls were inseparable companions. Once they decided to vie with each other and play to see who was stronger. Pallas, the child of the sea god, was first aiming her spear at her friend, when Zeus, who feared for his daughter, held before her a shield covered with goatskin. The Aegeus, Pallas, was startled by this unlooked-for sight. She looked up timidly, and at that moment Athene dealt her a fatal wound. The goddess mourned her death deeply. In memory, her beloved friend, she had an image made of her furnished by a breastplate of the same goatskin as the shield, set the image before the statue of Zeus, and held it in high honor. And from this time on, she called herself Pallas Athene. With his daughter's consent, Zeus now cast this palladium down from the sky into the region of Ilium as a sign that both the stronghold and the city were to be under his and his daughter's protection. The son of King Ilos and Eurydice was Lamodin, a self-willed and violent man who deceived not only his fellow men, but the gods as well. 
It was he who thought of ensuring the safety of Troy, which was not fortified like the citadel, by surrounding it with a wall and thus making it a real city. At that time, Apollo and Poseidon, who had rebelled against the father of the gods and been thrust out of heaven, were homeless wanderers in the world below. It was the will of Zeus that they help King Lamedon build the walls of Troy so that this city, which he and his daughter Athene cherished, might be safe against aggressors. Fate brought the errant gods to the envisions of Troy just as the building of the wall was begun. They offered the king their assistance, asked a certain wage which he promised them, and began their period of servitude. Poseidon helped with the building itself. Under his direction, the wall rose broad and beautiful, a solid defense for the city. Phoebus Apollo, in the meantime, pastured the king's horned cattle in the winding valleys and ravines of the wooded mountains of Ida. The gods had pledged their service for the space of a year. When twelve months had passed and the wall stood complete in its all its splendor, the treacherous king refused to pay them their due. And when they argued the matter and eloquent Apollo broke into bitter reproaches, he drove them off, threatening to bind the sun god hand and foot and mutilate the ears of both. The gods left him in sullen anger and become implacably hostile to Lamadun and the entire Trojan people. Athene, too, withdrew her favor from the city, which up to this time had been under her protection. So with the tacit consent of Zeus, Troy, which had just been safeguarded with a stately wall, Troy, with her kings and her citizens, was abandoned to destruction by these immortals, who soon counted among their number Hera, who also turned against the city with burning hatred. And here ends our tale for today. But I'll be back with more tales. Many more tales. Until then, my friends, enjoy the journey.